Good morning, Church of the Resurrection. Good morning. Good morning. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. We begin with hymn 306 and the words will be on the screen. Good morning, please be seated. Well, I got here this morning and uh, realized I was going to get to sit with my beloved today because uh, Margaret is celebrating and... <laughs> I think Leon is preaching. Somebody asked me if this was the new vestment for an archdeacon. Uh, I've been here over a year now. I know this because last year I bought a $6 hat and wore it the day after the uh, bazaar. And somebody said to me yesterday, you need to buy another hat. <laughs> so here it is, my $6 hat. We're glad you're back. Um, I'm sure there are other announcements to be made. Uh, Steve will have some. Yeah. Good morning. Good Just very quickly on retiring the debt, I will try to do this every week that I can. Uh, if I'm awake. It was a long day yesterday. <laughs> so we are now at eight, over $80,000 committed, well past halfway, and 13000 or 15000 uh, collected in cash so far. So that's fantastic. We're only uh, a few weeks into the program. Uh, I encourage you, if you haven't uh, looked at your pledge form yet, please uh, prayerfully consider and bring them in. Also in that package is the uh, PAG uh, 
pre-authorized giving form. If you have some concerns about that, Irene is giving tutorials. She'll help you out. Uh, and if you have any questions, of course, see us at coffee. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, two things. One, uh, St. Matthew's House, our Holiday of Hope, is still going on. Uh, last day to donate for that is December the 3rd, and then hopefully uh, some friends and I will go out shopping and spend all your, your money, which is great for our single family, uh, single mom, with uh, two kids, a 12-year-old boy and a 9-year-old, 8-year-old girl, um, and then a single senior, 72-year-old uh, woman. So looking forward to doing all that. Um, and thank you to those who have already donated. Um, you can make your check out to Church of the Resurrection, or you can e-transfer and just make sure you put Holiday Hope Program on it or St. Matthew's House um, Christmas. Then we know where that's to go. Um, and I would love to say thank you to everybody who came out um, yesterday to support the church and bought all the goodies and supported the vendors that came, but also the hardworking, amazing group that uh, put on <laughs> this uh, market. It's a labor of love, I'm sure, for those who do it. Um, and there were days before, you, you don't realize how much goes into doing a one-day, four-hour event. It's days and weeks uh, of prep and uh, volunteering. Good times in the kitchen, I heard, were had with some music and giggles, which is always a good time. Um, and I know I enjoyed the baked goods that were... <laughs> Um, available for sale. So thank you to all of you who did that on, on behalf of uh, Corporation and the Church. <laughs> We're in church. <laughs> I just want to let everybody know through all our efforts and thank you I second what Mary was saying there, and so does Glenna. It is hard work, but it pays off in the end. We made almost $4,000 yesterday. So, thank you very much. Well, I wanted to say all of that, too, and so I'll third... Uh, what uh, Mary said. Um, just before church began today, uh, there was a, a buzz. Did you notice in the in the room? Uh, a labor of love happened uh, on the way to that nearly four thousand dollars, and uh, and some pretty tired folk uh, came out to church today. But there's an energy, I think, as well that comes from that, and I'm very grateful for the spirit that has people working so hard for this place that we all love. Um, any other announcements? All right. I'm going to read, uh, I'm, I'm running out of announcements that people made for land acknowledgements. I've done them all once. Uh, today it seems a good day to go back to Glenna for her land acknowledgement. This is offered in uh, Thanksgiving for the gift of life and swollen ankles. <laughs> this land was never free. This land has been bought and sold over and over again. Its soil is blood red. Until we love our neighbors unconditionally, it will never be free. May God have mercy on us. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the light of the world. Free us from all that darkens and ensnares us and bring us to eternal light and joy through the power of him who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we listen for God's word. A reading from 
from the book of Judges. The Israelites came again, did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after Ehud died. So the Lord sold them into the land of King Jabin of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Harazeth Hagoim. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help, for he had 900 chariots of iron and had oppressed the Israelites cruelly 20 years. At that time, Deborah, the prophetess, wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramam and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the Israelites came up to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak, son of Abinam, from Kedesh in Athali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go take position at Mount Tabor, bringing 10,000 from the tribe of Napoli and to the tribe of Zebulun. I will draw out Sisera, the general of Jabin's army, to meet you by the Wadi Kishon, which his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. Holy word, holy wisdom. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. It is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. The one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. The one who had received one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you are a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? 
then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return, I would have received my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. God entrusts us with many more gifts and talents than we realize to be used for building up the household of God. What sort of return on investment will God receive from us? Church vitality does not depend on a leader or a leader's charisma, but on how inspired the entire church is to be actively involved, be responsible for its own ministry and caring for each other. When all members see themselves as needed, responsible and contributing, then amazing transformation can happen. The call to faithful service is not always easy to respond to, but all things are possible when we realize how much God loves us and trusts the church to care for the world. One of Jesus' most significant parables regarding work is set in the context of investments. Today's Gospel from Matthew tells us the story of a rich man who delegates the management of his wealth to his servant, much as investors in today's market do. He gives five talents to one, two talents to the second, and one talent to the third. Two of the servants earn 100% return by trading with the funds, but the third servant hide the money in the ground and earn nothing. The rich man returns, reward the two who made money, but severely punishes the servant who did nothing. The meaning of today's parable extends far beyond financial investment. God has given each, each of us a wide variety of gifts 
and God expects us to imply those gifts in his service. It is not acceptable to put those gifts on a shelf and ignore them. And like the three servants, we do not have gifts of the same degree. The return God expects from us is equal with the gifts we have been given. The servant who received one talent was not condemned for failing to reach the five talent goal. He was condemned because he did nothing with what was given to him. The gifts we receive from God include skills, abilities, family connections, social positions, education, experiences, and more. The point of the parable is that we are to use whatever we have been given for God's purpose. The severe consequences to the armed productive servant far beyond anything triggered by mere business mediocrity tells us that we are to invest our lives, not waste them. But yet the particular talent invested in the parable is a large amount of money. In modern English, the fact is obscured because the word talent has come to refer mainly to skills and abilities. What this parable concerns is about money. It depicts investing, not hoarding, as a godly thing to do if it, if it accomplishes godly purposes in a godly manner. In the end, the master praises the two trustworthy servants with words, well done, good and trustworthy slaves. In these words, we see that the master cares about the results, the method, and the motivation. However, there are times when Christians speak as if growth, productivity, and return on investments were unholy to God. But today's parable overturns that notion We should invest our skills and abilities and our wealth and the resources made available to us at work, all for the affair of God's kingdom. And this includes the pro production of needed goods and service. The volunteers who teach at Sunday school, those who assist with the luncheon, the gardeners, and those who organize and repair the facilities. They are fulfilling this parable. God does not endow people with identical or necessarily equal gifts. And God does not expect identical results from everyone's work. In today's parable, one servant makes a return of five talents. Another servant makes a return of two. They are both equally praised. And it is important to observe that both servants invest for the benefit of the master and they return to him not only his original investment, but also what they made on his behalf. When we say that everything we have is a gift from God, we don't mean that what we have belong to us now instead of God. We mean that it is a privilege to be entrusted with talents, resources, and opportunities to work towards God's purposes in, in the world. The implication of the parable is that if we do so, we take our place among all faithful, trustworthy servants of God, no matter how big or small 
our accomplishments may seem. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, God of love, hear our prayer. For peace from on high and for our salvation, let us pray to our Lord, God of love, hear our prayer. We lift the flowers in honor of Pilot Officer Russell Munn Almas, 429 Squadron, Royal Canadian Air Force killed in action over Germany on the 21st of November, 1944. Lovingly remembered by Claire Stewart, Carl and Ian Sneed, and Beth Sneed and Stephen Dieter. God of love, hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. God of love, for our bishop, the Right Reverend Dr. Susan Bell, in the, Ni <coughs> the Niagara Diocese, we pray for St. Paul, Mount Forest, the Reverend Kevin Cole, interim priest in charge, and the people of that parish. Our clergy, Archdeacon Jim Sandilands, Leon Burke, Margaret Murray, and Bob Linklater, our lay leaders and people of this parish, especially Mabel Swift, Steve and Glenna Swing, Peta and Catherine, Kathy Zoda and their families, and for all the clergy and people during this challenging time, let us pray to the Lord. God of love, hear our prayer. For Charles our King, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. God of love, hear our prayer. For this city, Hamilton, for every city and community, and for those who live in them in faith, let us pray to the Lord. God of love, hear our prayer. For good weather and for abundant harvests, for all to share, let us pray to the Lord. God of love, hear our prayer. For those who travel by land, water, or air, for the sick and the suffering, especially Frank, Albert, Fred, John and Sylvia, Diane R., Mabel, Susan Turnbull, Millicent W., Dulcie, Phyllis C., Kevin B., Eileen and Benham, David K., Wayne L., and Keith for prisoners and captives, and for their safety, health, and salvation. Let us pray to the Lord, God of love, hear our prayer. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need, let us pray to the Lord, God of love, hear our prayer. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord, God of love, hear our prayer. For all those who've died, we also pray for the people of the Ukraine and Palestine and Israel and all those who are victims of violence. Let us pray to the Lord, God of love, hear our prayer. Remembering today, Nick Mayer, Nicole Rutledge, and Cecil Tucker, who are celebrating their birthdays this week. May God bless all those who are celebrating this week and all the best in the year ahead. Let us pray to the Lord, God of love, hear our prayer. Remembering all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord, God of love, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common, common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son, that when two or three are gathered together, you will hear their requests. 
Fulfill now our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this whole world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, eternal life for you, Father, our good and loving. We glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of Christ be with you all. And also, and also with you. Peace. 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 Peace, Donna. Peace. 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 Peace, yes. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Holy God, in this Eucharist, we renew our baptismal covenant. Help us through our offering this day to renounce all things that draw us from your love. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Eternal God, source of all being, 
we give you thanks and praise for your faithful love. You call us into friendship with you and with one another to be your holy people, a sign of your presence in the world. When those we trust betray us, unfailingly you remain with us. When we injure others, you confront us in your love and call us back to the paths of righteousness. You stand with the weak and those broken and alone, whom you have always welcomed home, making the first last and the last first. Therefore, we raise our voices with angels and archangels, forever praising you and singing. Blessed are you, Holy One. When Hagar was driven into the wilderness, you followed her and gave her hope. When Joseph was sold into bondage, you turned malice to your people's good. When you called Israel out of slavery, you brought them through the wilderness into the promised land. When your people were taken into exile, you wept with them by the river of Babylon and carried them home. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine. At the right time, you sent your anointed one to stand with the poor and the outcast and the oppressed. Jesus touched lepers and the sick and healed them. He accepted water from a woman of Samaria and offered her the water of new life. Christ knew the desolation of the cross and opened the way for all humanity into the redemption of your reconciling love. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus, at supper with his friends, took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Loving and Holy One, recalling Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you these gifts, longing for the bread of tomorrow and the wine of the age to come. Therefore, we proclaim our hope. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that through them you may sustain our hunger for your peace. We hold before you all those whose lives are marked by suffering, our sisters and brothers, when we are broken and cast aside, embrace us in your love. Restore us, O God, let your face shine. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All honor and glory are yours, O source of all life, now and forever. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who trust in him. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
gracious God, in this sacrament, we have shared the body and blood of Christ. May we who have been nourished by holy things bear witness to his light and share in his eternal priesthood, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The God of all grace, who has called you to eternal glory in Christ Jesus, restore, establish, and strengthen you in the faith. And the blessing of God, our creator, our redeemer, and the spirit of life that moves within and among us be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. God. 